Hello everyone, my name is Scott Shields. I'm the Associate Director and Chief Curator of the Crocker Art Museum. And I'd like to welcome you all to the 80th Crocker Kingsley exhibition. This year held at Blue Line Arts in Roseville as it has been for the past several years. I was able to see the show um, just recently and it's quite wonderful. It's one of the largest shows that I can remember on record. Um, there were 1700 works of art submitted for consideration and 150 were chosen. But even that 150 number, which isn't great odds if you're one of the artists, um, is a larger show than most. And then the five of the works will get cash prizes, and then we selected five works for the Crocker Art Museum um, showing active. And we were really thrilled with the quality of the submissions, um, the diversity, there's really truly something in this show for everybody. A little history on the Crocker Kingsley. It's been going on since 1926 um, and happens every two years at this point. And it, the club itself, the Kingsley Art Club, goes back to 1892. It was founded by 15 Sacramento women um, who came together to support art and culture in the community. Um, as I said, this is the 80th Crocker Kingsley exhibition, which is amazing in and of itself. There have been some premier artists um, who are now internationally renowned that have contributed um, and won prizes and had their work selected for the Kingsley. And they include people like Robert Arneson, Elmer Bischoff, Fred Dahlke, Robert Ellis, David Gooley, Ralph Goings, Gregory Condos, Roland Peterson, Mel Ramos, Ruth Rippon, Fritz Schilder, Gerald Silva, and Wayne Thiebaud, and many, many others. Um, and I think this year is one of the strongest that I can remember. And I look forward to having you see the work um, and then coming to the Crocker and seeing the pieces we selected. It's important to say that the juror, Carrie Letter, um, has great experience. She, she was the one that selected the show and she will also be the one selecting the prizes at the blue line, the cash prices. Um, but the prizes that are um, not necessarily the ones that are going to come to the Crocker. So a group from the Crocker, uh, from the curatorial team, went out and selected the works that will be shown here. There was some overlap, but not a lot. This show is really a labor of love for a lot of people. And many people on the Kingsley side helped put it together, and especially Cecilia Delury, who was the chair, and then she was ably assisted by Pam Saltenberger and Nancy Lawrence. And then at the Blue Line Arts, we had a great team there, and it's Mary Tess Mayall and Brooke Abrams, and they were, they were just great to work with, and um, we look forward to working with them again in the future and to the 81st Crocker Kingsley. So I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you can come see it. Um, you can wear your mask, or you have to wear your mask, and just, just enjoy because there's something in it for everybody, and I think it's really one of the best shows that I've seen. Hello, my name is Mary Tess Mayall and welcome to the Crocker Kingsley Show at Blue Line Arts. This show is a wonderful collaboration with the Kingsley Art Club and the Crocker Art Museum. This year, for the first time, it is a national art competition. Our juror this year was Carrie Letterer. She is an independent artist and curator. She's also been a curator at the Bedford Gallery for over 20 years. We are honored to have her make the selections for this year's show. We have over 146 works in this show, um, selected from over 1,700 entries. Um, I'm excited to show you what we have in store, so come along and let's check them out. One of the best parts about this show is not only the high caliber works of art, but also the awards that are given out to the artists. The juror selects the cash prizes for first through fifth place, and the Crocker Art Museum selects five works to be on display at the museum following the show. Here to talk to you more about it is the co-director at Blue Line Arts, Brooke Abrams. I'd like to show you this piece, uh, Blue Bell by Peter Coombe. Uh, Peter Coombe's a Bay Area artist who works with circle cut paint swatches. And as you can see from this portrait, he works from black and white photographs um, to recreate a pointillism effect with circle die cut um, paint swatches. He works with a range of over 1100 colors and it creates a really amazing effect when you move from one side of the painting to the other. 
This piece, Downward Blob, is a collaboration between artists Laura Konechny and Nate Ditzler, who both hail originally from Hawaii. And Nate Ditzler's ceramic forms um, are often playful shapes that look like they could come from a children's coloring book. Um, and this abstract painting um, has been done with an underglaze, a glaze, and an overglaze to really give it a matte, interesting finish. And this next work is a great example of some of the surrealist themes that we see in this show. This work is called Garage Band by Thomas Frontini. And as you can see, there's some amazing details in this work. Um, what I especially enjoy is some of the rock formations that you can see in the trees, which really give it a um, kind of a dreamlike quality to the work. And this piece really draws you in. The more you look at it, the more details you'll be able to find. There's some really interesting um, critters in the, in the far corners and the whole um, feel of the work um, is very um, homey and there's a, a really nice narrative that comes to light the more you look at it. This next work is a great example of a couple of different art mediums that are showcased throughout the show. Fiber art, painting, and mixed media. This work is called Flower Child by an artist named Sue Bradford. And the more you look at it, the more details come to light. Uh, the artist has used vintage encyclopedia pages of botanicals and has um, put some really beautiful um, threading embroidery on top of some of the flowers here. So there's a very interesting layer of um, just a commentary on uh, women's stories as well as nature in this one. This piece behind me is from a series by artist Stephen Magnum titled Illusions of My Childhood. And in the background, you can see a newspaper clipping that references the Mississippi Three incident, um, which occurred during a summer in the artist's childhood. Uh, so this series is a really interesting way for the artist to reconcile memories of a happy, peaceful summer with also very disturbing events going on in the South and um, the artist's attempt to um, analyze these events through a lens of race and justice in America. At the front of the gallery here, we have some wonderful examples of not only photography, but also digital prints that can be quite imaginative and engaging. Up here in the corner, we have number nine by an artist named Marisa White. Uh, we see a, um, a figure here with her head in the clouds, and um, it seems to be a, a really fun capture of not only childhood, but a little bit of surrealism too and uh, it has been claimed. <laughs> and down here we have a work called Self-Study in the Garden by Donna Dongat. And this one is particularly engaging because you see part of the figure's face, but you also see um, a variety of different flowers here. So, you know, it has to do with identity and also nature and the environment, which I find so interesting. Many artists in this show draw their inspiration from the natural environment. This piece behind me by Linda McDonald is actually the view from the inside of a hollow redwood tree. At the bottom of the painting, you can sort of see where the um, bark has rotted off and there is a hollow space um, in which the artist is now looking up through the inside of one of these majestic trees. Several works in the show touch on current events, such as the coronavirus pandemic. Behind me, you can see a piece by Ryan Carrington. It's an American flag sewn entirely out of lab coats and hospital scrubs. It's a fitting tribute to the tireless efforts of healthcare workers. In the Crocker Kingsley, we also have a wonderful variety of abstract work to, um, to view. This work behind me here is titled Oracle by an artist named Ellen Babcock from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And this work in particular 
um, I find very intriguing. It's one of the favorites in the show because not only is it um, an abstract swirl of color, but it's mixed media as well. There are some lines coming out of the middle here and also some um, almost teeth-like looking um, uh, details here as well. So you get the sense of an open mouth possibly from the oracle, but um, regardless, it's just another really engaging um, storytelling piece. So here we have the sketch for a quarantine portrait by Rick Ambrose, and this is a uh, graphite on archival paper. And um, as you can see, the point of view from the artist is looking out over the sort of Groundhog Day situation that we've all found ourselves in at some point during 2020. And um, if you look closely in the bottom corner, you can actually see the artist um, sketching an alternate view of the room on a separate but still very identical day of quarantine. Here we have two pieces by David Avery. Um, they are etchings and they are completely black and white. The artist does not work in color. And if you look really closely, each of these pieces is just replete with so much interesting detail and like this dark gallows humor. Here we have Encore and um, below it is The Frailty of Realization, which was a Crocker Award winner. We have a wide range of sculptural pieces in the Crocker Kingsley as well, and uh, I just want to show you one with a little bit of humor to it. This piece by Sandy Calhoun is um, titled Cracked Nut, and um, if you'll notice, um, it appears to be a bit of a squirrel um, in Sandy's signature style, um, but you do notice a small zipper piece on, on this figure, and um, the artist was wondering, if the furries had a god, what would that god look like? So. With the hand gestures, you can see that she's imagined a very comedic, um, furry bodhisattva, if you will. Thank you for joining us for the 2021 Crocker Kingsley. We'd like to thank the Crocker Art Museum, our juror Carrie Letterer, and of course the Kingsley Art Club for supporting this exhibition. We hope you come by and visit us in person and you can also view and shop all of the works online at bluelinearts.org.